dear students today we'll talk about the posterior view of the skull or what we call as the norma occipitalis or norma posterior norma occipitalis it is convex upward and on each side and it is flat below now we'll see which bones are contributing in the formation of this norma occipitalis number one bone is the occipital bone squamous part of the occipital bone which is the most permanently seen bone in this view and small parts of the parietal bones superior laterally we can see and those of the temporal bones mastoid part of the temporal bones it is seen inferior laterally in this view now sometimes some uh, at the apex of this squamous part of the occipital bone here a small piece of bone is seen which is called as the intraparietal bone or inca we'll see inca in another skull this is the posterior view of the skull okay this this bone this bone is called as the inca or interparietal bone i'm marking this with a green color chalk this is inca it is not a sutural or accessory bone but it is a membranous part of the this occipital bone which fails to fuse with the cartilaginous part okay now now we will see the sutures in the norma occipitalis we talk about the sutures here you can see the posterior part of the sagittal suture okay i'm marking this posterior part with green color chalk now another suture which we can see here is the lambdoid suture and this lambdoid suture it lies between the this occipital bone and two parietal bones i'm marking this suture with a blue color chalk this is the lambdoid suture another suture which we can see here is the occipito mastoid suture let's see this is the mastoid part of the temporal bone this is occipital bone and this suture it is called as the occipito mastoid suture i'll mark this with a yellow color chalk this suture this suture is the occipito mastoid suture another suture we can see here is the parieto mastoid suture parieto mastoid suture i'm marking this with pink color chalk which lies between this parietal bone and mastoid part of the temporal bone so in total sagittal suture posterior part lambdoid suture occipito mastoid suture and parieto mastoid suture is seen in the posterior view of the skull now we'll talk about the features which we can see here number 1 and very important feature external occipital protuberance external occipital protuberance 
it is a midline protuberance on the lower part of this norma occipitalis okay from this protuberance from this external occipital protuberance on the either side two curved ridges pass laterally okay and these ridges or these lines they are called as the superior knuckle lines this external occipital protuberance and the superior knuckle lines they mark ye these or we can say these are the demarcations for the head and neck and below that neck starts so obviously it is demarcation or the lower part of this norma occipitalis and beyond that norma basialis starts okay now a point is seen here on this external occipital protuberance or we can say the most prominent point on this external occipital protuberance it is called as the inion most prominent point it is called as the inion and this inion it is the surface marking of the internal attachment of the tentorium cerebelli okay another point it is seen in the midline just above this inion and this point is called as the occipital point and this point it is farthest from the glabella glabella it is a imaginary point between the two superciliary arches okay so if you take an anterior posterior distance this will be the farthest okay now sometimes two more lines are present on the either side of this external occipital protuberance and these are situated a centimeter above this superior knuckle lines these are called as the highest knuckle lines these are very curved these are curved lines and they are not always present these highest knuckle lines they are not always present okay now another feature which we can see in this norma occipitalis is the mastoid foramen mastoid foramen this foramen it is located near this occipital mastoid suture this mastoid foramen it lies near this occipital mastoid suture and this foramen it opens internally into the sigmoid sulcus this foramen it opens internally into the sigmoid sulcus the attachment which we can see in this area is the upper part of the external occipital protuberance it gives rise to the trapezius and lower part it gives attachment to the ligamentum nuque and the medial one third of the superior knuckle lines this medial one third of the superior knuckle lines they give origin to the trapezius and their lateral part they provide their 
this lateral part of the superior knuckle lines they provide the attachment uh, or we can say insertion to the sternocleidomastoid muscle above and below this area this below this area here here splenus capitis it is inserted okay now epicranial aponeurosis it is attached on the medial part of this highest knuckle lines glia aponeurotica or epicranial aponeurosis it is attached on the medial part of this highest knuckle lines and occipital belly of the occipital frontalis muscle it originates on each side from its lateral two third lateral two third of this highest knuckle line from here occipital belly of the occipital frontalis muscle it originates now as you know this is the mastoid foramen the structures which uh, transverse through this mastoid foramen is the meningeal branch of the occipital artery and the emissary vein okay now if we we'll talk about the uh, if we talk about the applied anatomy then the first point which comes in our mind is the craniostenosis or malformation of the uh, skull craniostenosis it is a condition in which there is premature closures of this cranial sutures when this lambdoid suture and this corner sutures are involved then the skull it grows vertically like this leading to the tower skull okay now this squamous part of the occipital bone it is prone to both fissured and depressed fractures depressed fractures are usually they are they are reduced to the minute particles with broken portions of the bones they are displayed inward and required surgical intervention to repair the underlying tissue damage with this we have come to the end of the norma occipitalis thank you